In this video, I want to discuss the settings that I use on Bookmap, and I'm going to talk about why I believe it's one of the best trading platforms or tools out there. And it has to do with just the ease of information, how clean certain aspects that the data is presented to me. And also it has like this secret feature that I'm going to talk about in this video that not a lot of traders know about. And in my opinion, it's vital for every individual traders success. I'm going to go over the book map basics. If you're confused with what you're looking at, I'm going to explain all in depth of every single thing on my screen. I'm going to talk about my settings. I get a lot of questions on the daily basis of what settings do I use? It's pretty simple. I'm going to explain all them. And then I'm going to talk about specific setups and patterns that I look for on the heat map that give me an advantage in the market to take high quality trading setups. For those who don't follow me on Instagram, I'm going to post a link to do so in the description below, because if you are a follower of me on here, I'd show daily trading recaps and I talk about specific confirmations that I look for on Bookmap and just the in-depths of how I trade viewing the market as an auction. The link to my Instagram will be in the description below. If you don't follow me, I highly recommend it. And also a link in the description below will be for a book map discount code for 20% off for traders who are interested in using it. I want to show you all the difference of a normal candlestick chart, which here we could kind of see a V shape. The market sells off, then bounces and kind of forms this V shape. Well, if I were to pull up book map and remove certain information, we could see the same thing here. We see the sell off down and we see the recovery to the upside forming this V shape. So all Bookmap does in this platform shows us volume that we cannot see from a normal candlestick chart. Comparing the two on this candlestick chart, all we see is red and green candles of the market selling off and then moving up. But if we were to zoom in and understand what makes up those candles, we will be able to see the volume that causes the market to move and causes those candles to form. Now, when you first open Bookmap, yours may look a lot different than mine, but before I get into the settings that I use so you could mimic mine and copy it, I first want to talk about the basics of the market's auction and the information that this platform provides to me that I could use to my advantage. So not only does the heat map show me current market data, I could see the buying and the selling volume that's happening right now. It also shows me historic data, which in my opinion is the greatest advantage because let's just say I wasn't at my charts or let's just say I went to the bathroom or I wasn't watching the market at some exact moment that something occurred. Well, on this platform, I could go back to a different time. I could go back 20 minutes before. I could go back to yesterday and I could observe the price action at specific moments and I could see the volume that was being transacted at those prices. So it shows me historic data, which we cannot see from a normal level two. A normal level two will just show us what is occurring right now at this exact moment based off the order book. Not only does book map or the heat map show us what's happening right now on the current order book, which is just simply this COB column up here. It's the current order book, but it shows us historical data. I could go back to the last minute and see, okay, there was a large red line here, which means there was a large buyer present in the market. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the volume bubbles themselves because we have to talk about the current order book, which again is that level two data that a lot of traders are accustomed to. The lines on the charts simply just show the current and even historic order book. Anything below the current price is the current order book towards the buy side, which just means there are passive buyers there. Now, what it does is it color coordinates the buyers and the sellers on the order book by red being the thickest and blue being the thinnest. So any thick buyer or every large buyer or large seller will be red. Then it goes to orange, yellow, and white being a lot thinner. So what we can do here is we could see at 56, 69 and a half, there are 65 buyers looking to bid at the 69 and a half 65 buyers at the 56 69 and a half directly under this there are 67 buyers at the 69 evens the line now is yellow because there are more buyers looking to passively buy at the 69s than there are at the 69 and a half which is represented by a yellow line we can even zoom out and look at previous orders and we could see that this line which was once red 
there was at one point 84 buyers. The colors are dynamic. They're gonna constantly change depending on the data that we have in front of our screens because it's all aggregated. So the darker red the color, the thicker the buyer, the thicker the seller is. Anything below price is just simply passive buyers and anything above price are just simply passive sellers, 68 right up here, and then 63 right up here. And we can relate this to the current order book, which is what a lot of traders are used to, being just level two data. Now when I add volume dots, this shows completed transactions. For a limit order to get filled, someone has to come in and hit what a market order. When a market order hits a limit order, this is when we get a completed transaction, and this is when we could see it off of this data. So if I were to zoom into this right here, the colors obviously represent red being a lot of selling market orders, and green being a lot of aggressive market buy orders. So down here at 56, 69 and a half, we have a yellow line, and I want you all to watch the reaction here of the bubbles coming in as this level is gonna get filled. The market's gonna come down here and there's gonna be right about here, 60 uh, sell orders coming in to 63 buy orders. If there are more passive buy orders than there are market sell orders, then the market will move up, which is what we're doing right now. So if I were to zoom into this and that line where there were 63 passive buyers at, there were only 60 red aggressive sell orders coming in. So if there are more passive orders than there are aggressive orders, then the market will start to move up. And this is the basis to this heat map with how the bubbles represent where the market's gonna go. It shows who is aggressive and who is passive. If there are more aggressive orders, more aggressively hitting the market than there are passive orders, then the market will continue to move in that direction. And if there are more limit orders, which are represented by the lines, then the market will form that floor or form that ceiling that a lot of people refer to. Now, as far as settings go, what I have done is, is most of the time your book maps will start out looking like this, which to me is very confusing. It, it shows pretty much every order at every price. I want to filter just larger orders. So what I've done is I've adjusted the contrast and I make it the highest possible so I only filter out larger discrepancies in the orders. Another thing that I have done is I've made my settings these colors and adjusted the intensity all the way up, just makes it brighter. Now recently there's been this weird algo bracket order. I'm really not sure what to make of it, but it's in irrelevant information for a lot of traders and it just skews the data because they are larger orders that will completely block out the current order books which are current to the market. Now, like I said, they're aggregated, so anything that we're looking at will be affected the other data. So to remove this bracket order, what I've done is I've gone to add-ons and I add the add-on called Trader Map Light. Now, what this is gonna do is it's going to ignore that bracket order that is affecting the data that we see on the heat map. It's an add-on called Trader Map Light. Now what this will look like zooming out is it will completely remove that bracket order and it will show me information that is a lot clearer. Looking at these two charts, which are identical right now, you see how the bracket order is in the mix versus when I add Trader Map Light, that bracket order is just non-existent anymore and it helps clear out a lot of the noise. A couple other things that are unique to my book map itself is I have added three columns to the right which are significant in my analysis. The first one is RTH, which if I right click this column, it is just a session accumulated volume profile. I go into the reset column, reset configurations, and I reset this at market open at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time and I rename this RTH because it is a regular trading hours session volume profile that just resets at market open. The next column is CVP, which is just a chart volume profile. That column will change depending on what I am looking at specific to what's on my charts. So I'm zoomed in right here. If I zoom out, you're gonna see that column change because it's showing me what is shown on the heat map currently on my charts. And also the right column is just a normal session volume profile. There's no resets. It's just a standard defaulted column. I've also added VWAP, which is a white line and a very, very important add-on, which could only be used using Global Plus uh, package on Bookmap is the Dom Pro. 
The Dom Pro is a depth of market, and if you execute off of Bookmap, which you can very well trade off of it, this tool is vital to use because you can actually buy and sell off of it. It will show us the volume profile. Everything red is more aggressive selling. Everything blue is more aggressive buying. We can see the VPD column, which is just a volume profile delta column, and I'll put all my columns up here. So if you want to screenshot this and duplicate it for your own, you could very well do so along with my settings. But a depth of market is something that I use on a daily basis. It's vital to my trading and it's important to execute off of. It gives us the price. It helps us with the speed of the tape. When the depth of market is speeding up and it's moving very fast, this just indicates a lot of volume and a lot of interest is pouring into the market versus when it's moving slow, there's not a lot of volume or not a lot of interest in the market. And that in itself gives important information that we can't see elsewhere. Now let's talk about actual trades that I've taken. And the first thing that I want to explain is that out of the nine years that I've been trading, Bookmap has the best feature in terms of market replay meaning you can go back to any day, any time that you had Bookmap itself open. If I click open data file on the replay, I can go back to every single time that I've had Bookmap open, that I've recorded my data on Bookmap, and I could go back to, let's just say I took a trade on January 2nd, 2025. I could click this and I could say, okay, at this exact moment, I wanna see what I was watching and what made me click that buy or sell button. And I could go back to any day, any time, any second, I could speed up the replay, I could slow it down. And you're gonna see me do this now because I've loaded up March 18th, 2025, where I take a solid downside short play. And I wanna break down the concepts that I've explained so far in this video. So I'm gonna speed up this replay. Like I said, this is the best replay feature that I've experienced out of every trading platform that I've ever used. This is the most user-friendly, not clunky at all, and this tremendously has helped me build, build my edge and refine my trading and adjust to current market conditions. This is probably the best feature that Bookmap has to offer that I've made the most use out of um, is the market fee uh, replay feature. So what we're gonna see here is the market's gonna begin to sell off. And on this sell-off, we're going to see a lot of red bubbles or aggressive selling as the market is coming down. Now, I want you all to watch around 5,700 and 5,697 and a half. We could see a large uh, buyer here at 5,697. I'm not going to go to this um, heat map right here. And we could see... 1,042 contracts at 5697 and a half. If I were to hold my cursor over this, we could see a large, large passive buyer sitting here. And on the depth of market, we could see the same exact thing. 1,042 at 5697 and a half. I'm going to play this now in 2x speed and the market's going to break down under this. And there's going to be a lot of aggressive selling step in right there. A lot of aggressive selling stepped in, a large red bubble. If we were to hover over that, that was 1,200 contracts at 56.97. And like I said earlier, the more we zoom in and zoom out of things, the data will change because it's aggregated. So if I were to zoom into this exact order, all the way in, this exact order was only 900 contracts. But if I were to zoom out and see it accumulate, because like I said, it is cumulative, now we could see 12. 40 something because that is just where I'm zooming into. So there was a lot of aggressive selling here that is out of the ordinary or that is unusual to the current market. Now I'm going to speed this up again and we're going to see the market sell off more and even more aggressive selling is going to step in and we're going to see this action occur again down here at 5694. 5694 we see you know the earlier print let's just say we were in the bathroom at this moment right we went to the bathroom we came back if we were to look at a normal platform, we're not going to be able to see this information. But with this platform, I could go back and if, if I miss this, I could see this. And it's, it's, it's historic data is just as important as present moment data. But now zooming into the present moment, we could see 1,040 again at 56.94. First one was up here. The second one is now up here at 56.94. And we could see this on the depth of market, 1,040. It's just a current order book. The market's going to sell off. And boom, more volume is facilitated. And we could see this represented by this large red bubble, large volume down here, large volume on the volume profile, and even on the depth of market. So we're seeing the market aggressively sell off multiple accounts. We see one more step in right here. And there's just a lot of aggressive selling stepping into the market as it's moving lower. Let me go to TM Light. 
If I were to zoom out, you could see all this aggressive selling hitting. And on the depth of market, you could see all these delta outliers. If at any moment, any of these terms or concepts don't make sense, I have a full order flow series on my channel. I'm going to link that in the description below of this video. It's a full in-depth order flow series that I've done. It's very, very valuable and insightful. But as the market's selling off and I'm seeing these aggressive sellers step in and the market is selling off much lower, there's continuation down. This 5694 level, 5700 level is very significant to my analysis because now I formulate a very bearish plan. Seeing how the selling is stepping in, I formulate a plan that I am watching now, 5695, that if sellers appear, I will look to play shorts targeting the previous low of day. I'm only showing you all this because it just validates that I've you know watched the setup and, and taken this trade personally. So we're seeing all the selling and I view this as a very large seller present in the market. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna draw on this charts 56.95 where that level formed all the way up to 57.03. And I'm gonna make this a pink supply box. That way you could all see it. So my thesis was we're seeing the selling activity. There's a lot of aggressive selling stepping in. We see it on the depth of market. We see it on the heat map. We see it with the large volume bubbles. And now I'm looking to short a pop into this. The market rallies perfectly right into this 56.95 level. And as we're coming into this level, a larger offer appears. Now going back, I'm just gonna remove this rectangle. You all could see it at 56.95, but if we were to zoom into this data, we could see an offer sitting here. The market moves up, hits this offer, is a thicker offer because it's a yellow, orange, and red line, gets filled with aggressive buying, yet the market could not move up. And this is a perfect reversal signal for me to short directly into where this large red bubble was. If I were to just to draw a line here where this red bubble was, it rejected it perfectly, giving me enough confirmation to take the market short here at 56.94 as it was popping up to target a sell-off to the downside. If I were to speed up this replay, the market's going to sell off and aggressively move down where I was able to profit on taking the market short and playing a rejection of this selling volume that we could see on the heat map and the depth of market. So just really fast, like you see how important this replay feature is? Like I'm recording this video on March 23rd, 2025. And I could go back to my data file and I could go to March 18th for this example and I could zoom in, I could zoom out, I could speed up the replay, I could slow it down to half speed. I could do anything to reverse engineer this, go back and look at my trades and see exactly what the market was doing at specific times. Now here's another setup that I took on the S&P 500 and this was just simply longing a pullback into what I call market structured demand. So in the Discord, like every day I post what I'm watching, my analysis, everything like that. But what I was watching for was what I call market structured demand. So zooming in here, we can see the market sold off, consolidated, and then rallied to the upside. If I were to look on a, let's just say five minute chart, we really cannot see this information too much. We see the sell off, we see 10 minutes of consolidation, and then we see a rally, but I would not formulate a candlestick structure of demand on this example. But pulling up the heat map, we could see the market clearly consolidated for quite some time and then rallied up. This is something that I like to see when I am playing the market to the upside. It is what I call market structured demand, where I just simply highlight where the market consolidated prior to a large rally up. Zooming into this data, we see the consolidation right here. We see the rally up. And now my objective is to long a pullback into where this level forms. The market pulls back into this perfectly. And on this pullback, if I were to zoom in, we could see a larger bid sitting here. Remember what I said earlier. If there are more passive buyers sitting at a level than there are aggressive participants hitting those buyers, then the market will start to move up. If I were to show you, there was a bid sitting here for 71 contracts at this 56.65 level. The volume dot was only nine aggressive market buy orders and then even 14 a little later on. And if I were to just zoom out, it get about 23 selling volume aggressively hitting the 70 something limit orders. That just causes the market to move up. And when you formulate this at levels of interest where there's a large bid sitting at a level of support, large bid sitting at a level demand, this is when we get the reversals. And this is how I was able to capitalize on that pull back down into this market structure level of demand, pulls back, holds, and then continues to rally up. And that was the solid setup with that.
If you have any questions with this video, let me know down below. If you've got any value out of it, I would appreciate a like on it. And if you're new to my channel, I would really, really appreciate hitting that subscribe button. But I'm ending it on that note. Check out the links in the description below for discounts. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.